10.2 is regression. We're trying to find that regression line or a line of fit. And it's going to look like this. That should remind you of MX plus B, but backwards. Um, the first symbol right there is read as Y hat. And that's what we are looking for. Your Y intercept is B0. Your slope is B1. And that's when we're talking about a sample, which is what we will be talking about in order to give us this equation that we want. You could look at a population and those variables, but it's pretty much the same exact thing. Requirements. We've talked about this before. We've got three requirements. Check to make sure it's random. Check to make sure it looks like a straight line. Check to make sure there aren't any outliers. Now, hopefully you're going to be able to use some technology, but if you did have to use um, just kind of paper and pencil and calculator, I guess regular calculator, you could use these formulas. Now, we are going to do an example with these two formulas. S, remember, was standard deviation. So standard deviation of the Y values, standard deviation of the X values. R, of course, is the correlation coefficient. So you've got a couple of things to know. And this, this Y bar is the mean of the Y values. And this X bar is the mean of the X values. That's what we're going to be using. If we couldn't use any kind of calculators at all, we would want to use these sigma formulas over here to the right. You might remember that from a previous lesson when we had a table and we had to find all those sums of all those different columns. I don't really want to do that, though. I'd rather use some sort of some form of technology. This just says we're going to round to three digits. Number one, using technology to find the regression equation. I did make a mistake when I was typing in these numbers, so make sure you fix that number over there. Otherwise, your numbers won't work out right. A 5.5 is supposed to be a 3.3. So checking the requirements. Number one, is it a random sample? Number two, straight line. And number three was, which one was that? Outliers. So you may recall, we've kind of talked about this before. We did these checks before. Um, you know, random sample, it, it's not technically, uh, we don't think it's a random sample. Remember, we can pull these numbers for this specific example into StatDisk. And if we look at the data plot, you're saying, yeah, that kind of looks like a straight line. I don't see any other pattern. So that's straight line-ish. Outliers, not really. OK, fine. Use StatDisk or a TI to find the equation of the regression line. You've done this already. You get those numbers into StatDisk. You go to analysis, right, up here at the top, analysis. And then you make these columns, chocolate and Nobel. And you hit evaluate, and it'll take you to the results right here. Results, and you've got all kinds of data. Some you'll need, some you won't. I could see the correlation coefficient, 0 0.80061, critical values, p-value, whatever. But what we're looking at is, or what we're looking for in this case, are the B0 and B1 numbers. B0 and B1 right there, so we can write our regression equation. Remember, B1 is the slope. B1 is the slope, and B0 is that y-intercept. So I'm going to write this equation. Y hat equals negative 3.367 plus 2.493x. That is my regression equation. I use StatDisk for that. Now, those of you with the TI, let me show you how to do that real quick. If you have a TI, you're going to go into Stat. So hit the Stat button and Edit. And you would enter your, your X numbers and your Y numbers as lists. L1 is the chocolate numbers. L2 is the Nobel numbers. Enter them all. There are 23 of them. 
And then if you go back into the stat menu, you can do a calculate. And what do we want to do? We want to do a linear regression. Okay, we want to do a linear regression. And you'd have this choice or this choice. I like this choice better because this is our form that we're using. Calculate. And that should give me my two numbers, negative 3.367 and 2.493. All right, so example two says do the same thing, but this time without using so much technology. So we're going to use those formulas, and I'm going to use the first version of the formula that said B1 equaled R times S sub Y over S sub X. So remember that critical value. I think this is kind of weird because, you know, we're using technology when we're not really supposed to be using, I don't know. So that was my critical value, 0 0.80061. So that's my R value. And then the standard deviation of your X numbers or your Y numbers, you've got several different ways of finding the standard deviation. If you have a TI, you could go back into your stat menu and calculate some two variable stats. And these two variable stats will give you a whole bunch of information. But if you notice, um, one of those information right in the, in the middle of the screen is SX. And if you go down a little bit more, you'll see SY. Those are the numbers you would want. SX and SY for this are the standard deviations. Okay. So those are your standard deviation, SY and SX. Or you could do gold adder. Um, gold adder will allow you to do a standard deviation. You have to type in all of those numbers, though. Notice it's number, comma, number, comma, number. And 10.21, yeah, that's here. I found the standard deviation of the Y numbers right there. So you can do that. You could use a, a spreadsheet program to find the standard deviation. There's a lot of different ways to find that number, but here we go. The SY number was about 10.2116, and the SX number was 3.279201. Let me get another couple of numbers there. 211601. Doesn't really matter. Just keep a lot of decimals so you know you'll you'll be rounded off correctly. Now, when we calculate this, 0 0.80061 times that fraction right there, we are going to get about 2.493. That is our B1. All right, that was our B1. Now, the other formula that we were supposed to use b0 and again this was from one of the first slides equals y bar minus b1 times x bar y bar is the mean of those y values and again if you go into those two var stats you can see y bar right there 11.1 .1 in the middle of the screen 11.1043 11.1043 minus B1 was what we just found, 2.493. Use more decimals if you want, the more the better probably. And then your X bar would be your, your X average. Um, again, you could look in here at your two variable stats and find X bar. There it is, 5.804. 5.804. Oh, four, three. Also, if you're on gold adder, you could you could type in the numbers and do a mean this way, or cut and paste from your standard deviation. Either way, find that mean. This must have been the mean of the y numbers, 11.104. But we want to calculate that. We can find this b zero is about negative three point three. What was it? Six seven. That's what it should be. It, it might be off because of rounding, but that's what it should be. We're trying to find the regression equation, so put it all together. Y hat equals 
negative 3.367 plus 2.49x. So then once we get that equation, we're going to graph it and it's going to, you know, be some sort of line through your scatter plot. That equation represents the line through your scatter plot. This question says, how well do you think this line fits the data? And I don't really love questions like that because you could argue it either way, I think. But in this case, I'd say maybe the line fits pretty well. Not perfect, it's not a perfect fit, it's pretty good. Looks like those dots make a straight line, pretty good. Why we want a equation is for predicting the future, okay? If we have that equation, we can just plug something in and figure out something that's going to happen. And, and so that's, that's why we're doing this, that's the whole point, is for making predictions. At some point, you're gonna come up with a bad model though, and when that happens, the best predicted value is the sample mean, okay? If it's a bad model, use the mean. That's going to come up. If it's a good model, then we can use the equation. Good model, use the regression equation, all right? We're going to plug a number in. We're going to plug an X number in to find a Y number. That's what we're going to do. So correlation, use the regression equation for predictions only if the linear coalition, uh, correlation coefficient indicates there is a linear correlation. So make sure and check that it's a linear relationship. Wouldn't hurt to look at your scatter plot, make sure it's a line, as opposed to, you know, sometimes you try to shoot a line through and it's like, wait, 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 that's not linear. There is some sort of relationship, but it's not linear. Use the regression line for predictions only if the data do not go much beyond the scope of the available data. This summarizes your strategy again. You've got, um, you know, kind of these three things to look at. Show that the line fits the points. Just check R for linear correlation and check the scope. If you decide that it's a good model, you're using the equation. If you decide that it is not a good model, you're finding the mean of the y values. Good model, equation, bad model, use the mean. Number four, making predictions. Use the data to predict the Nobel rate for chocolate consumption of 10. Okay, so we're saying this one is a good model. And if it's a good model, we're going to use the equation. The equation was given a couple of slides ago. The equation was y hat equals negative 3.367 plus 2.493x. And literally all we have to do here is plug in this X number, plug in that. So negative 3.367 plus 2.493 times 10. Type that in on a calculator and you're going to get about 21.5 or 21.6, something like that. 21.5. Nobel winners. Now, something you may have missed or I may have neglected to explain earlier was um, when this problem was first introduced, it's per 10 million people. So when we talk about Nobel winners, that is per 10 million people. Part B, predict the IQ score of an adult who is exactly 175 centimeters tall. One of your variables is IQ score. The other variable is height. 
And so you look at those two variables and you say, well, those two things don't seem to be related. As height goes up, IQ goes up. That's not how it works. As height goes up, IQ goes down. No, that's not how it works. They're not really related. And so if there's not a correlation, no correlation, then we can't use an equation. We're going to use the mean. It's been a while since we've seen this example, but a while back we saw that IQ scores were normally distributed and the mean was 100, bless you, and the standard deviation was 15, so that's 115 and 130 and 145 and down here was 85, 70, and 55. Now that's more information than we need because all I really care about is the mean. The mean is 100 and, and so that's my prediction. Oh, you're 175 centimeters tall? I'm going to predict that your IQ score is 100. That's my prediction. So if it's a bad model, use the mean. How did I know this information? I didn't just make it up. We, we saw it a month or so ago. That's the uh, IQ scores, normal, dis normal distribution. Marginal change is the amount that it changes when the other variable changes by exactly one unit. Think about when you've talked about slope before. A slope of 2.49 is like up 2.49 and over one. So marginal change is talking about the, the amount that it changes when the other one changes by one unit. Outliers and influential points. An outlier is a point lying far away from the other data. Influential points strongly affect the graph of the regression line. So outlier, far away from the other data points. Influential points strongly affect the regression line. And that's what this next example is about. We've got the same chocolate Nobel data graphed in the first picture. And then what they're going to do is they're going to add in one extra point, the point 50, comma, zero, which is right here. They ask, is that an influential point? So in order to understand that, look back at that definition. Influential point strongly affects the graph. So notice how the line looked like this. You put that one point in and it completely changes the graph. It drastically changes the line. So yes, that is influential. It strongly affects the line. Is that point an outlier? Well, again, go back and look at the definition. An outlier is a point lying far away from the other data. Well, yeah, that is, that is far away from the other data. Residuals. For a pair of sample X and Y values, the residual is the difference between the observed sample value of Y and the Y value that is predicted using the regression equation. That is residual equals observed Y minus predicted Y. Now, I think that's a little bit hard to read and hard to understand, so let me paint a picture for you you're going to have some kind of scatter plot. And, you know, whatever, let's make this one right here, let's see. The regression equation is some kind of line that tries to represent all of those points, all right? Now, you would find a, resi a residual for each of those points. And so I'm just going to look at one specifically. I'm going to look at this one right here. When I'm talking about a residual, I'm talking about how far is it from 
the ideal. Okay, how far is it off the line, basically? So this data point is going to have some kind of y value. It's an x, y point. But the regression equation says that it's supposed to be right there. And so what we're looking at is what the y actually is versus what the y would be ideally perfectly on that line. And that's what this says. y minus y hat says observed y minus predicted y. That's what we're doing. Example six says find the residuals for each point. So you've got four different x, y points. We want to find the residuals. Residual has a formula. Residual was y minus y hat or y minus observed. And so, no, I said that backwards. Observed minus predicted. Those y values right there, 4, 24, 8, and 32, are the observed y values. That's what it actually is. Those are the points. y hat has to follow the equation. In this case, that equation is 1 plus x. So we can calculate four different y hats. Take 1 plus the x number and get 9, 1 plus the x number 13, 1 plus the x number is 21, 1 plus the x number is 25. Those are our predicted y values. Oops, this should say y hat right here, right? Y hat. That would be ideal according to the equation. That's what the equation says y should be. The residuals is basically how far off are we? And that formula is y minus y hat. So we can calculate four different residuals. y minus y hat is what we have actually minus what we wanted or what the equation said it should be. That's negative 5. And the y number minus the predicted is 11. y number minus predicted is negative 13. y number minus predicted is seven. We've got, we've got four residuals right here. Those are my four residuals. And if you look at the graph, that picture is kind of hard to read because of those squares, but, but it's, it's basically talking about how far off we are. So we know we're not just off by five, we're off by five below the line and, and 11 above the line and 13 below the line and seven above the line. Those are my residuals talking about how far off the line it is. So as we move forward, I'm going to kind of move forward. Straight line satisfies the least squares property. If the sum of the squares of the residuals is the smallest sum possible. Smallest sum possible is zero. I want it to be zero because that would be perfect. All of my points would be right on the line. That would be perfect. We're not going to be perfect, but we want those numbers to be as small as possible, as close as possible to the line. All right. Now, the reason we have to square them is because if you look at these numbers, negative 5 and negative 13 and 11 and 7, those four numbers add up to zero. You might be looking at a zero and think, well, that's perfect. That's what I want. Okay. But that's just because the negatives, the ones below the line, are canceling out the ones above the line. If we square them 25, 121, 169, and 49, we won't have to worry about negatives canceling out positives. We can just look at, okay, we want this to be the smallest thing possible. Closest to zero um, is the closest to perfect. So they draw these little squares here to show that we squared that and got 25. And we squared this and got 121. And we squared that 7 and got 49. And we squared this and got 169 right there. 
right? We want those areas of those squares to be as small as possible because that will be as close as possible to the predicted equation. Residual plot is literally just x comma residual. We're talking about the x number and then the residual plot those points. So to construct a residual plot, it says draw a horizontal reference line through the residual value of zero, and then plot those ordered pairs. If I was going to do one from example six, we had four points, x comma residual, x comma residual, x comma residual, x comma residual and our graph looks kind of weird because you'd have this horizontal line in the middle at zero and we're going to end up having like a point here and one here and and down here and, and over here okay i'm not going to do uh tick marks i'm not going to make that super precise but but that was you know plotting the the residual points plotting those four points but also having that line at zero The residual plot should not have any obvious pattern. The residual plot should not become much wider or thinner when viewed from left to right. So I'm actually gonna come back to number seven. Let's look at these three examples right here. This first example is pretty good, but if you look at the second one, the second one kind of has a pattern. Um, it kind of looks like either a sine wave or a parabola shape or something like that. That has a pattern that suggests that the regression equation is not a good model. This one, see how it's wider over here than it is over here? It's getting kind of wider. That's no good. That's what they're talking about. This one's a good model. It's, uh, it's pretty much a straight line, I guess. Good model. Number seven looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. It wants to find a residual. It says when the first sample X value of 4.5 is substituted into the regression equation, we get the predicted value of 7.84. But the actual value is 5.5. So think about it. We've got this XY point of 4.5 comma 5.5 that's the um that is the actual value right so the predicted you just take this number 4.5 and plug it into the equation right there negative 3.37 plus 2.49 times 4.5 and we get about 7.84. I didn't need to do that, but that's predicted. Or y hat. To find the residual, we take the y number minus the y hat number, or 5.5 minus 7.84. That would give us a value of, where is it, negative 2.34. That's it. That's the residual. So I just did a lot more talking and a lot more work than it, it seems like was called for. But you're just taking the actual minus the predicted. That is your residual. We've got this residual plot. If you think about the point that they're referring to, it was 4.5 comma negative 2.34 which, where is that? Right here, that's this point right there. They're talking about this point, but as far as answering the question, the residual was negative 